All right, welcome guys. We are on to chapter five. So we have we have hit the uh, we've hit hump day in terms of uh, readings. Uh, although honestly, this is not like a regular work day. I work week. I've been okay. I like I like my work weeks too. But I've been enjoying the chapters. So I'll probably be kind of sad when we hit chapter nine. But uh, today we are looking at feedback, which obviously is one of the things that is most valuable and also that we often fall down on, I think, or at least maybe I'm speaking to myself there. But one of the areas that I know I can improve the most is, is the topic of really today's chapter, which is timely and useful feedback, with timely being very important. So now, Patrick, you're going to take the lead on giving us a chapter summary on this one. I, I am, most definitely. Okay, feedback. Yeah, definitely. It's uh it's 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 key for key for sure. I kept going back to the uh to, to our coaching, the way we kind of started, you know. It's it's uh she she begins the chapter with the uh with the with the two key areas, formative assessment, which we talk about as being assessment for learning, right? Timely and high quality or what she calls effective. So it's all of that. Well, it's basically how we learn, how we learn anything. Uh, grading has very little to do with actual learning. It's the it's the formative assessment, the feedback, the opportunity for for practice and and honing the the skill or or whatever it might be. Um, and then, of course, summative assessment, which is assessment of learning. So once the formative part is done, the practice is is done, then you get the uh, the the evaluation, um, the judgment. As to grab two quick pictures, once again, you can see one formative assessment, very detailed feedback, one person uh, giving uh, giving advice on stance, and and then the judge, the flashing of the numbers, right? One happens before the other, and I think it's important to help students understand the difference between it. Yeah, there will be grades, but you're not ready yet. <laughs> Grading comes towards the end. You build towards that. But of course, there's always the motivation and how do you get students to take that formative assessment and do the trying and the practicing? Uh, there might be some interesting ideas for to, to incentivize that as well. So she talks about her five uh, models and she kind of breaks them around, you know, timely versus high quality and some uh, overlap on each other. But as I was reading, I kind of went back and, and saw, well, each of these actually builds on those those presences that that we talked about in that model in the previous chapter. So deadlines strategically, and I think we all do this, right? You look at say, okay, what's coming? What will students need uh, to do? Looking at it from a selfish perspective, what do I want to be uh, uh, marking and grading at what time? But also looking at it to see, well, what what fits with students to be able to give them some lead time. Uh, she talks about you know Sunday nights as opposed to Monday nights and those kinds of things. Uh, real time conversations, I say, even since his book, I mean, Teams has that little uh, telephone uh, uh, icon there, uh, you know, audio, you can just you can just speak to someone in a, a quick Teams call, have that immediate kind of conversation uh, that allows for uh, for for, you know, instant feedback and we see as Moodle allows audio and and video feedback and that that kind of runs throughout. Um, Office hours, once again, timely, but also high quality, being able to uh, rethink that. And she had some really nice ideas in there about uh, uh, coffee time and, and changing the, the language around office hours, right? It just sounds, sounds so uh, staid, but uh, ways of kind of rethinking that. Um, using the tech to streamline the grading. Uh, I really like the, uh, the, the rubric, and maybe that's something uh, uh, we can we can look at, Jason. I don't know how to do the whole rubric thing as a part of the grading in, in Moodle. She just talks about her LMS and you can do this. Um, I don't know how much it is to set that up in the grade book, but that allows students to to see their progress, which uh, you know informs them. She used the example of uh, I think it was her husband was 80% through the course and had, hadn't received or 75% through the course and hadn't received any real feedback. And, and that happens more often than we think that students are in the dark about how they're doing in any particular course. So, and of course, using the tech for feedback. And we have so many opportunities to do that. And um, without sucking up too much bandwidth, I guess, but quick little video, we, we talked about this earlier, video feedback is, and students give, 
feedback on that type of feedback and they really like it. They value it. But as I said, this also builds teacher presence. It, it builds social presence because you're connecting with the students and also engagement. You know, you can talk, give feedback. The students are aware. Uh, what do I need to do next? How can I improve? And that engages them and helps them you know, go back and, and really learn those kinds of things. So just to finish up uh, quickly, I like this quote what students crave and what too often they don't receive is feedback specifically designed to help them get better especially through frequent low stakes assessments so that's kind of really key and i took that away as a as a closing closing comment thanks patrick um so jeff i just wanted to acknowledge your uh, your comment there maybe just in the to keep things a little bit uh, more focused right now on, on the discussion maybe i'll get you to throw something in the uh in the discussion thread afterwards sure um, or or if there's a video that already exists with the ctl or something you can throw that in there as well i don't recall if there is uh, as a reminder for anyone who's following along in real time the the ctl has now over the last you know, year and a half geez man we've been doing this a while but <laughs> uh, a massive database of instructional yeah. videos jeff and i made a couple of the beginning ones but they've just been keeping and going and going and going and there's I don't know there's got to be 40 or 50 videos there easily on pretty much anything you could want to do uh, exists uh, there now. So, um, well, let's start off the, the discussion maybe by talking uh, not about the the uh, uh, the timely stuff, but talking about um, uh, real time feedback in the form of office hours. I know this is something which is which has come up in conversation previously. Do you guys how do you go about trying to offer synchronous opportunities for for discussion with uh, with your students uh, in this asynchronous world that we're in now. So I want to take a lead and tell us what you do, what works, what doesn't. So <laughs> um, at the beginning of my term uh, in almost all of my classes, uh, usually all of my classes, and I started doing this actually long before anything was online. <laughs> I started doing it um, when I was all face to face. I have students fill out, and this is not original to me, but I have students fill out um, a simple form. Um, prior to COVID, it was literally like a handout that they wrote on, um, but now it's a Microsoft form. Anyway, they fill that out and the, the, the catch or the difference is they have to deliver it to my office. Again, obviously they can't do that um, <laughs> now. And so, you know, but when they deliver it, we would have like a five minute conversation. And I would do this all in the first couple of weeks of class. Of course, I have smaller classes, so that helps. But um, I just decided, why not try to do it virtually? And so I did that in the fall, and I did it again this term, um, where basically they have to fill out the Microsoft form and set up a meeting with me. And I used, I think, Calendly, which I'm not wedded to, but that's what I used this time. And they sign up. It pops up on my calendar. We call each other on teams for five minutes or 10 minutes. Usually they go a little longer um, if, if it's going well and they ask any questions. It gives them a chance to say like, hey, actually there's this thing that like, I don't really wanna write down, but I have to tell you, or just like, I'm super overwhelmed and confused and don't know where the syllabus is, right? Like it gives them a chance to do any of those things. Um, and it really makes a difference with community. Um, haven't done as much of it through the semester but I actually just today um, had, I have a class that I'm teaching uh, synchronously once a week and the other day they do asynchronous stuff. So for today's class period, I said I would be there and I had a couple of students come by and I didn't call it office hours. I think I called it a coffee hour or something. Um, and I only had two students out of like 18 show up, but we had good conversations. And I answered a lot of their individual questions. So I'm a big fan. I think that's the, one of the biggest things I took away from this chapter is like to find more creative ways to do some of that, like FaceTime, for lack of a better way of putting it. Nice. Patrick, Jeff, you guys want to add something? Yeah, my, my, my big fail on the office hours, I guess, was just kind of posting it and being online and just sitting there waiting you know for someone to show up and uh invariably it was just you know crickets right so i, I appreciated that that part of of the chapter where she says yeah even changing the language around it and and see intimidation factor for a lot of students too i said what the hell i'm not going to get out and talk to my professor i'll probably yeah. be the only one there how terrifying is that right so so uh, i'll be trapped with this guy on, on, mm -hmm. on line so yeah, finding finding ways to to soften that a little bit and to uh, to, to to maybe um, uh, just make 
welcoming. I, I, invariably, when I do get a chance to speak to people who would never, never come to one of these open sessions, they, they so how are things going? And they have questions for me. I say, yeah, well, once you drop by, and they're right, but but they're not going to they're not going to take the initiative. So I thought that was really interesting to to rethink that. I, I never even thought of the language around it, but yeah, sure, it's something we could we could do better at. I think. Uh, on the on the same note, the uh, the the uh, the less is better kind of idea. That, that's something I might take into heart. That yeah, it's going to hard to get students to show up, uh, show up every single week to to something. But just thinking back to when we used to have review sessions before midterms and this yeah. sort of thing, right? Those are the only times. It's still, I mean, the attendance is still often pretty mediocre, right? And you know who's going to show up to a lot of these, but you'd still get third or half of the class. Whereas now, mm -hmm. I don't know about you guys, but I'm 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 averaging. Maybe twenty five percent, twenty percent showing up to Ever. my. I have, yeah. I have weekly yeah. review sessions uh, in one of my classes because they actually schedule a time, right? Because uh, it's, yeah, but I'm running, I'm running it functionally asynchronously. So right. I knew that time was at least in theory free for the students. So I was like, oh, I got to take one of these, one of these scheduled time blocks. I'm just going to make it open. I get maybe twenty percent, and it's the literally it's the same three students every single week. Um, but yeah, I mean, in review sessions, it used to come more. So maybe maybe those pre-scheduled four times in advance. And of course, we have pre-scheduling, and she noted this in the chapter, important so that students can work it around their increasingly complicated lives. Yeah. So I do, and this is the thing I do is in some sense uh, totally giving up on the whole idea of office hours and trying something else entirely different. So um, this is something I do in all my first year courses. I, I, do, I have these things that I call mastery tasks. Um, so the way they work, they're, they're required. Um, uh, in the current classes I'm running, they have five of them that they have to do uh, at some point in the course and they each have a deadline. Mm. And the way these work, um, first I'll, I'll tell you how I do them not online, and then I'll tell you how they work online. So when, when we're not online, they show up whenever. And I say, I have office hours scheduled, and you can show up to do these during my office hours, but anytime you can catch me is good. Um, so they show up. Uh, I hand them the mastery task. It's a little piece of paper about this big, and it has something for them to do, which uses one of the key ideas. And they're always, they're intended as quick little, mm. essentially skill checks of core skills in the course, right? So these are like in first year physics courses, these are things like drawing free body diagrams, drawing energy bar charts, things like this. So they turn up, I hand it to them, they sit down and do it. They're designed to take perhaps two minutes, although often they take longer. Um, then they bring it in and I and hand it to me. I mark it right in front of them, which takes about 10 seconds. Um, if it's right, I just mark it off as done. If it's wrong, I show them what was wrong and hand them a new one. Repeat until they can do it. Oh, practice, yeah. right? Yeah, and <laughs> and so, you know, A, this is a requirement. And so I get them all coming to my office or yeah. in fact, not to my office because what I do is I hold all my office hours in the Math and Science Center, right? The, the Learning Commons, which has a dual purpose. First of all, it means that when a bunch of them want to see me all at once for stuff like this, it's more convenient than my office. But two, it also introduces them to the Math and Science Center and gets them in the habit of going there, which I think is crucial. Um, anyway, so that's that's how those work. Um, uh, online, the way I've made this work is that again, they have to come and do it. Well, that means sending me a chat on Teams and saying, hey, can I do the mastery task? I said, yeah, sure, I'm free and I call them. Right, and now uh, I open an online whiteboard, right? A shared whiteboard. I hand them the link and I drop the mastery task on the whiteboard. They do it there. Tell me when they're ready for me to look at it. I look at it on the whiteboard, give them their feedback. If they need to do it again, delete it, give them a new one on the whiteboard. Rinse and repeat. Um, so now it's a little time consuming. Uh, 
Although what I find is, you know, unlike office hours, right? Office hours, you schedule, you know, we're required to have five hours a week, whatever, and nobody turns up. Well, these, I set the particular deadlines and for about the two days before each of those deadlines, tomorrow is a deadline, so I'm actually really busy today, for about the two days before one of these deadlines, I'm really busy with people doing mastery tasks, mm -hmm. but then that's it. Yeah. Right. It's and so that's sort of five times through the term. I have a, a block of two days where I'm pretty busy running people through mastery tasks. Um, it's a little more time consuming online because I find I can't manage more than two students at once doing yeah. that. Okay. Whereas uh, when when it's face to face and I can be down in the math and science center, I can have like 15 people turn up. I just hand them all pieces yeah, of paper. Yeah. They go and sit down and then I'll develop like a little short lineup of two or three people at a time waiting for feedback, right? Yeah. So it's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, speaking of time, uh, so one of the uh, one of the you know the big points was timely feedback, and you emphasize this, Patrick. And I, and I know this is something I, I fall down on all the time because both I, I have trouble concentrating, and so uh, marking always takes me my, my ratio of marking to like looking at Twitter or getting up and <laughs> or something. It's, it's like it's just, you know my my brain does not do well at these kind of menial tasks of running through yeah. these things. So I, it, I'm I'm not efficient. I'm not efficient, yeah. uh, but it, 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 even it's even worse now because I have so much more stuff I could be doing. So last semester, for example, I spent all the time desperately building out, you know, online labs and lessons and things, and I put off the the marking of labs until the end of the semester. And of course, that means they're not getting real time feedback, which. Uh, I mean, it's better that they had some kind of lessons to do or labs that existed, but <laughs> the other part needs to be done too, right? And yeah. uh, the I, I've moved towards, and this is more relevant for people who do labs and things where it's you know a, a yes, no, factual kind of answer, but as much as possible, I've, I've moved towards automated feedback on things. And one of the things that's, that's really uh, useful is when you, if you build things out, either in the lesson format, which I, I do sometimes, and you're getting the real formative feedback inside the middle of the lesson. And mm -hmm. Jeff's done a great uh, a great thing that's hosted the CTL. There's like about four or five lessons, lessons on lessons that Jeff put together. But also using the, uh, however you say it, Closey, or how do you say that on Moodle? It's just called Close, and it's actually yeah, an acronym. Close format, I was, I was intimidated by this for years because it involves uh, involves a tiny bit of code. And I was just like, I'm not gonna do this code. Then I found a great website that just has like a cheat sheet of doing it. And it turns out to be really easy. So it that is. you can yeah. build out a, you know, an answer where you've got your question, you've got your sentence, and then you have, you know, a drop down list for words within your sentence. You have a whole block of paragraphs and you can have, you know, eight or 10 where they have to just fill in the words as they go along. And then you can have a, you know, short answer at the bottom of it. And you can have a whole list of things which are very easy to make and you can do a lot more with it. And so I automated things like, uh, you know, I'd have exercises where they have to identify a rock and they'd have to say, what's the name of this rock? How did it form? Where did it form? You know, what minerals are in it, et cetera. And so you've got four or five, you know, different answers for each one of these specimens. But they have 10 specimens and I've got 60 students. And so now if I'm having to look through and do each one of these, I'm looking at, you know, a thousand times I've got to look through and it's ridiculous, right? So by the time I get that, it's two weeks later. Now I've got it so it's instantaneous and automated. It takes a little bit more lead time to do it, but then it's instantaneous and I can put that time into doing real things. And you can set it up on Moodle and uh, and reach out to, to Jeff, reach out to me. We'll show you how to do this if you don't know how to do this. But you can set up in Moodle, so not only do they get the answer, but you can also give them hints and give them multiple tries. Again, there's a little bit more lead time for building that out, uh, but but you can do that. There's a lot of neat stuff. I'll tell you one more neat thing. So I did this a couple of years ago, and uh, uh, Barb uh, in biology actually built this out to a much bigger thing. Uh, I, I suggested this, and then she really ran with it. And if you ask her, she'll probably be willing to provide the document she created. But uh, I know everyone hates, or a large percentage of people hate, turnitin.com and, and all of these kinds of nanny software kinds of things. But we took that around and flipped it and used it for formative feedback. Right. And so the instead of using it to catch cheaters, exactly. using it to show students yeah. what they're doing so they don't do it. Anyways, so I did that where I required students to actually hand a draft in 
Then they could look through and they could see where the thing was flagging them. And then they would either sit down with me and I'd go through and we uh, explain how to do it, or alternatively, they just keep doing it until they fixed it. And in fact, there's actually, a, they can't just keep doing it a thousand times. They have to, <laughs> there's a lag each time you hand it in. But that allowed them to actually learn their errors so that one, they're not getting a, a sent up to the dean. And, uh, and two, they actually learn how to do it because most of my students weren't cheating on purpose. They just had yeah. zero idea how to cite something, right? Yeah. So using that tool, and turning it into you know automated formative feedback and it, you can either have the meeting with them or alternatively right. you can just let them do it on their own and they can teach themselves the errors and if they're really not getting it then reach out to you right. so that saved me a lot of time on both sending things to the dean but also on uh on going over drafts with them right because they could go to their peers they could just go to owl you know go to one of the websites and yeah. see okay what am i doing wrong and the algorithm is showing this flagging the areas for them so that saved a lot of time and gave them immediate real-time feedback during draft formulation anyways i yeah i can give you the basic version but barb made it a much bigger thing that was part of her class and apparently had really good feedback really enjoyed the experience great great yeah <laughs> Yeah, all time lag is not created equal, right? You know, for big summative yeah. things, students, you can take a week, two weeks yeah. to get it back to them. It's the kind of thing like, like Jeff mentioned. I mean, that's instantaneous. They get it, you look at it, boom, there it goes. And same with the uh, same with you, uh, Jason, right? That's the kind of, you know, if you were to say take a week and I'll get back to you on your mastery thing, you know, then the learning is just kind of yes. just halts, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you can, you can build it in that way. So similar, um, and this is something that we've done for years in the lab, which never really worked. And then this year being forced to do this online, I found a different way, right? So um, uh, pre-labs. Okay, so I mean, you know, the idea of a pre-lab is it's something the students are supposed to do before the lab and they have it done already when they turn up and it's to make sure they're actually ready to do the lab, right? So, I mean, for years I've been, you know, building these labs and they have a pre-lab section and the idea was they turn up at the beginning of the lab, they hand it to the lab instructor and in the first, you know, five or ten minutes as everybody's setting up, the lab instructor is very quickly marking the pre-labs and immediately handing them back to the students so they have some feedback at the start of the lab. Well, that's the theory, right? <laughs> but the practice, of course, is that the lab instructor is too busy helping people set up and, and so on and so forth and, and rarely would actually get the pre-labs marked in those five or ten minutes and turn back, right? So I said, well, OK, fine. This year we're having to do this all online anyway. I'll turn all the pre-labs into Moodle quizzes, right? Yep. And they're due, you know, midnight on Monday and the lab is due Friday and so on, right? And so I'm just going to keep that, right? Yeah. The, the, the pre-labs will just continue to be Moodle quizzes. Uh, works way and, better. And, and Jeff, tie, tying it back to a previous chapter, of course, I'm sure you do this. Uh, through the LMS, it's really easy to set it up for conditional release, right? So that yeah. they're not able to actually do yeah. the lab until yeah. they've done the pre-lab. That's right? right. And I've done, so I've done that, do that extensively. Same way, like, yeah. You know, they're not able to hand in their essay until they've, you know, until they've run a draft through a thing yeah. or something mm -hmm. like that right? yeah. to, to force them through those initial stages of getting yeah. feedback on their own. Yeah. And yeah, as much really as we automate that stuff, the more time we have to do the really, the really substantive things that make the a difference. Important things, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shana, you know, we're, oh, I was, was going to say, we're basically you, out Shana. of time, but I just wanted to say um, one of the things I've also found about timeliness, um, because a lot of, not everything, but a a chunk of the things that I end up assessing, even if they're formative, are like, you know, it's a performance or it's a three page reflective essay. And it's like, you can't, you know, a machine can't do that for me. Um, I can't really automate it. But um, one of the things I found is just being really upfront and human about it and saying like, so like for this just real example, um, my students who have never, most of them done a performance in their lives for their first performance this term was taking me longer than I wanted to get back to them. And I said, I'm working on, like I just sent them an announcement basically that said like, I have them, I'm working on them. I'm really proud of the work you all did. I wanna make sure you get real feedback that actually helps you improve. So it's going to take me a little longer. And I haven't received one complaint or question or, and I mean, they're all done now, but like in that time period that I had, 
it took the stress off of me a little bit to not be so like panicked about it, but it absolutely, I think they appreciated it. They appreciated the honesty, like, oh, cool. Okay. So I'll get some good feedback. All right. And you know, it saved any of those, like, when are we getting those back questions, which is fair, you know? Anyway, that's just something that I tried this time that really seemed successful. Um, and now I'm thinking like, how can I build that in ahead of time? Right. So I say like, these might take a little longer than a normal assignment for me to hand back to you. And here's why, and here's what I'm doing with that time. And then adjusting expectations as we go. Sure. Yeah. Good call. All right. Well, let's, let's end it on that note and uh, we'll throw a few extra little tidbits down in the, in the discussion, any little, uh, any tricks and videos and things like that. And uh, next week we will uh, finish up the second part of the book. All right.